Well, here I am. It's just about Christmas after doing this beer review thing for two years? Is it three years? Two years. I think it's two years. Uh, this is the 134th video I've recorded. Anyways, that I'm this far in and I just checked and I have not yet reviewed Rogue Brewing's Jubilale. I mean, Jubal Ale. Their festive winter ale. I suppose there's no time quite like the present, so I'm going to seize the day and misuse as many other metaphors as I can to uh, get into this. Uh, anyways, so I first experienced Jubilee eight years ago. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was eight years ago. Because it was a, a Christmas season or a late fall, um, actually Thanksgiving season, in Northern California. And I do believe it was just before, like within a week before I moved to Washington State. That's why I'm pretty sure it was eight years ago. I enjoyed it. I don't re really recall any specific thoughts about it, except that it had a decent amount of flavor without necessarily, and it was dark without necessarily being a, a stout or a porter kind of super roasty darkness. And I do clearly recall that at least for the first several years, I pronounced the name Jubilale, and I had no clue why they'd call their beer Jubilale. And it was only probably two, three, maybe four years ago at most that I realized, duh, <laughs> it's the Jubal Ale, as in the Celebration Ale, um, which makes a whole lot more sense. So, yeah, uh, this is by, oh gosh, did I say Rogue? I totally said Rogue. This is by Deschutes, not Rogue. I even titled my audio recording Rogue. It's not Rogue, it's Deschutes. I'm sorry, Deschutes. I mean, Rogue's another good brewery, but Deschutes is a good brewery too. Anyways, this is the Deschutes <sighs> Jubal Ale. Uh, Deschutes from Bend, Oregon, and this is a 6.7 ABV, so nice and moderate. Um, and it is focused on a robust malt character of toffee and dusted cocoa. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> with my fine taste buds. Anyway, so this is just for reference. This is the 2023 Jubal Ale uh, packaged in early October. So let's uh, dive in, shall we? There is definitely a malt character to this. Um, so that kind of dark bread, uh, not a rye bread, just a dark bread, uh, dark wheats, dark grains, stuff like that. Um, nice round breadiness. Uh, there's a little bit of a sweetness to it. Um, I believe this beer, or I think this beer in my opinion, tends to have a, a decent amount of sweetness to it, even though it's not necessarily a sweet beer or a stout or a porter that might be more sweet focused. This is, I would call this, um, I mean it might be a porter. Um, I suppose I might call it a brown ale. It has a really nice uh, brown to ruby color. And if your glass isn't frosted, you could see through it. It's not like a super dark. And so it has those kind of brown ale uh, characters, uh, the, the really nice bready maltiness rather than the super dark. Uh, and there is a little bit of cocoa, a little bit of chocolate to it. Being dusted cocoa, I'm expecting that to be like an unsweetened cocoa, so that would be a darker um, woody or possibly herby, or sorry, earthy, herby, <laughs> woody or earthy. Uh, characteristic with a bit of a sharpness to it. You know, the sort of thing you'd like dust over a chocolate cake on top of the white frosting, right? The, the sweetness in this doesn't really approach toffee kind of salty sweetness um, or milky caramelly sweetness. But it smells good. I mean, it smells like a, a malty, round, warming, uh, brown ale kind of smell. And that's perfectly good. Mm. And it has tons of flavor. So this is not a, this is not a holiday stout. It's not a chocolate stout. Somehow I, I get the idea that, um, and maybe it's because I want, 
I enjoy it a lot, so I want my wife to enjoy it. So I kind of convince myself it's sweeter every year, and then it, the years I get it, no, it's not a particularly sweet beer. It has that malty foundation, yes, but then through judicious use of, of hops and the, the roasting character, the roasted character of the of the the malt, and I don't know what all adjuncts they put in here. I wouldn't assume they put adjuncts in here. It may simply be the malt and the hops. It has this very, very nice, like unsweetened chocolate bitterness, like like roasted, and this nice breadiness. You're still tasting that malt, and maybe there's a hint of toffee, but I think I can taste some slight saltiness, but if you didn't put toffee on the bottle, I'm not sure I would pick it out. Once again, y'all know what my tasting taste buds are like. <laughs> Amateur. Average, right? Give this to some gourmand and they'd be like, oh yes, it's redolent of this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, ah, uh, it tastes good, right? Yum, yum. I like that, that bitterness, that, that full-bodied bitter quality because it's, it's nice. It, it cuts through other flavors. For that reason, I think this goes really well with sweeter desserts. Um, or richer foods because it has it has enough bitterness to be um, kind of a, a Cascadian dark ale black IPA kind of thing um, and if you are a fan of IPAs I think this in particular is going to be the sort of winter beer that appeals to you being a Northwest beer you know Pacific Northwest beer you're expecting the hops to be fully present and they're integrated very nicely and that bitterness and that nice malty body just work together very well and it's a very nice beer that goes well with foods or desserts or by itself frankly it's it's a good all-arounder it's a well-crafted well-balanced really tasty beer that I enjoy quite a lot it is certainly something worth being jubilant about let's put it that way Yeah, that's very nice. You know, even with that kind of dark chocolate and the, the, the nice bitterness that really starts early and continues all the way throughout, there still is a hint of juiciness. And and I suppose the, the toffee is coming through a little bit more as it's warm to touch, which that's traditional. Um, you know, the beer warms, the sweeter things are more present. And and so it, there's a lot of layers to it. it but it all works really well together. It's not like you're getting necessarily this flavor and then this flavor and then this flavor. You're getting them all at once, pretty much from the get-go. Um, some in come a little, some come in a little bit later, but they all they're all there present. It's not like any are fading. And then you have this really nice finish where it's just this bitterness lingers in your mouth and begs you to take another drink because it's that good. Yeah, good stuff. Very good stuff. Anyways. This is me, Matthew. I have been chewing the brew, drinking Deschutes Brewings, Jubal Ale 2023. And I will catch y'all on the flip side.